Welcome down in the basement of uh, Back to the 1010 Club. If this is your first time, thanks so much for checking the channel out. We focus on affordable watches and that's the Royal Weed. It's just me down here in the basement of my house in St. Louis, Missouri. But recently I bought a Vostok Commandeer Ski. It was different in several ways. Number one, there wasn't a crazy dial. It was just a gorgeous blue dial. And number two, it was 200 meters water resistant. I haven't heard of that on a Commandeer Ski before. I thought I found like a unicorn until I realized there is one other gorgeous blue 200 meter water resistant diver for under $60 on the market. And that comes from a much more recognizable name, Casio. The Casio Duro came out in a couple other colorways this year. I got the blue one, I fell in love with it. But these two watches are quite similar, but they also do have some striking differences. So this is gonna be a comparison video. First, we're gonna look at the specs and the similarities and differences between the dial, the crystal, bezel, the handset, the crown, strap, movement, all that stuff. Then we'll move on to the quality and the overall feel of each watch. Now, I already said they're quite similar, but also some striking differences. I'm gonna put a counter up because the amount of times I think I find that these watches are similar but different is uh, almost egregious. So let's check out these watches together, compare and contrast, and see which one might be best for you. All right, let's do some measurements real quick, and then we'll dive into these watches just a little bit more. So on the left, the Vostok Commandeer Ski, 41 and a half millimeters in diameter, and that's including the cushion case. It's just 40 millimeters if you're looking at the bezel. 49 millimeters lug to lug, a 20 millimeter lug width, and 15 millimeters thick, thanks in large part to the giant domed acrylic crystal that we will cover in just a few minutes. Now on the right, the Casio Duro, bigger as you can see, a 44 millimeter diameter diver, although the lug to lug distance is exactly the same as the Commandeer Ski. They both had a 49 millimeter lug to lug distance, also beefier lug width at 22 millimeters here, but then smaller when you look at the thickness, only 12 and a half millimeters thick because of a quartz inside and because of that flat mineral crystal on top. So in many ways, these watches are similar and in many ways, they still are different as we just experienced with the measurements, but the same goes for the dials. So let's look just a little bit closer at both of these watches. These are gorgeous, gorgeous watches. These blues are absolutely amazing, but also quite different. So this Casio is more like an inky blue on the dial. I still don't understand how they can get such a dynamic dial on such a cheap watch. It has a sunburst effect that I hope you can see, and I just love the depth of this color. It's, it's just beautiful. On the left, the Commandeer Ski, another gorgeous blue. This is more of a royal blue, which I appreciate because that was my high school colors, royal blue and white. Go Ganders! Yeah, my mascot was a male goose. Now, this blue is lighter and no sunburst, although it's not static, it's not flat. This still is a dynamic dial. I love the way this color plays with the light. Sometimes when you move it around, it looks like it's lighter around the edges and then darker in the middle. I don't know if that's a trick of the light or what, but either way, this dynamic color, I love staring at it. Bezels too, similar, but different. Gorgeous blues, I really, really love the way that, again, Casio was able to get such an awesome color on such a cheap watch. Also, aluminum inserts are kind of looked down upon nowadays, but if they all look this good, what is the problem? And this has like an acrylic coating on top that kind of looks like it's lacquered in a way. It gives it an extra depth, and I really enjoy that as well. Now, speaking of bezels, the bezels themselves are different. Also, this should be a quick break to say hi to my new black gloves. Hi, new black gloves. No more smudges on these watches while we're filming videos. So this is a bi-directional friction bezel. You hear that? You better not. <laughs> no ratcheting and it goes both ways. So if that's an issue for you, keep that in mind. Although I will say, number one, it's kind of nice if you're ratcheting and you go over to just be able to bring it back perfectly. Also, it lines up because it has to. Although it's not a true diver without a 120 click unidirectional bezel. And this Casio really pulls it off well. The bezel action is great. Not a lot of back play. You can see me doing it a little bit. But again, for such an affordable watch, 
this bezel action is phenomenal. I used to give it a little bit of grief. I called it too brittle, like it felt like cracking your knuckles when they shouldn't be cracked. I've softened my stance a little bit and I really do appreciate how quality it feels at the price that it is. And also, look how well it lines up. Handsets also similar but different. The Arrow Hour Hands, which I had to practice saying out loud because it's a friggin' tongue twister. Both look nice. Also the kind of fence post slash almost sword mitted hands. You'll see on the right a lot more loom on these hands and it kind of affects the legibility, I think, of the Commandeer Ski. They tried to get loom here on that minute hand, but almost why did you bother? Just a tiny little stripe does mess with the legibility just a bit. I will say both of them could be bigger, if only just the minute hand. Obviously we have an accented red second hand with the Commandeer Ski and just the normal shiny stainless steel or stainless steel lookalike ticking away on the Casio. Let's go to another difference, which is the crystal flat mineral crystal on the Casio and look at that friggin' dome on the Vostok. I am such a sucker for domed acrylic crystals. Well, domed any crystal, but I do love the bubble of an acrylic. There is a major downside and I think you can see it pretty well. I'll try to move it around just a little bit more. But if you can see how many scratches are on this Vostok already. Now, when I ordered this watch brand new in about 90 inches thick of cellophane and different plastic wrapping, this still came out of the box scratch. There was a very noticeable scratch above the two o'clock. I'll try to pull that in now. And that was before I even wore it. This thing is a scratch machine. Both have screw down crowns and both are 200 meters water resistant. Although again, similar, but different, they have weird crown issues. Now this is not broken. This is just what Vostok watches do, but it's hard to pull out. Like, did I do it? Oh, I did it. Sometimes I'll be pulling for seconds trying to figure out, did I engage the crown? Did I not? And then I'll, I'll push it back in and sometimes it'll work and it'll wind, but nope, right there, you see, I pushed it in and it's still setting the time. This is as pushed as it possibly can be against the threads of the screw. And it's still setting the time. So you have to like screw it in and then screw it out and now you can wind it. Now, speaking of winding, the winding experience is great. I love the way this watch winds. In fact, it's my favorite watch to date to wind. Although another downside is sometimes you catch it on the thread and all of a sudden you're screwing your watch back in when you meant to be winding it. This watch, the Casio Duro, also has a little bit of an issue with its crown. Number one, it's too small, I think, for this size watch. Although I still can unscrew it with gloves, so that's saying something. It's also a little bit wobbly, not at all as much as the Vostok, but still it is the, uh, the weakest feeling part of this watch. And also sometimes it's hard to tell, okay, that's the time, which position you pulled it out to or find the switch the date position. Not a great crown. They both don't have great crowns. Again, similar, but different. And this one is actually harder to screw in. Another thing to talk about are the straps. Neither of these are the OEM straps. This came on a black rubber strap. I'll pull in some footage now. Not flattering. It's just kind of the standard. It's very like SKX-like strap. It flares out past the lug, so it is not very graceful. It's not the most comfortable. It is more comfortable than the SKX band that comes with that watch. However, not great, and obviously I switched it out for this brown leather strap, which I think makes this watch look phenomenal. Also, the Commandeer Ski, it came on, and I'll pull this footage in, a navy NATO strap. The colors didn't match the watch. The buckle didn't match the metal. Not very complimentary. Now, an awesome upside of the Commandeer Ski, or just Vostok in general, you can buy these other straps, and I got this really vibrant blue that perfectly matches the watch for about $3.80 US. So <laughs> if you're selling me a silicone strap for under $4, you're damn right I'm going to buy it. It also could be put on this. Talk about a loud color. I bought this strap because again, you cannot wave a 
$3.80 strap at me and not expect me to jump at the opportunity. I guess what I'm saying is their normal straps suck, but both of these watches are strap monsters and you put them on, whoops, sorry. You put them on different straps, they are gonna look amazing. Now I've been hammering on about similar but different, similar but different. Let's talk about just the straight up most different thing about these two watches. And you can tell quite easily by looking at both of these second hands, the movement inside, an automatic on the left in the Vostok Commandeerski and quite clearly a quartz with the Casio. So the Commandeerski, it hand winds but does not hack. It runs about three seconds slow per day. The Casio is like plus or minus one second a month. Obviously the accuracy is going to be up with the Casio, but if you love the sweeping seconds hand, you're going to want to air towards the side of the Commandeerski. So those are looks. Let's just go to quality and how it feels in your hand. There are a few issues with the Commandeer Ski, so I'll start with that one first. As I covered earlier, it arrived scratched, so that is going to be a check in the negative side when looking at quality. You don't want to unwrap a brand new watch and find it scratched. Also, it doesn't really inspire confidence when your crown wiggles around like that, like a loose tooth. Also, the finishing is nice. The brushed finishing looks good, but it also could be possibly said that they did this entire thing brushed so we didn't have to look at the different edges and the different finishing qualities. Also, these edges, speaking of, are sharp. They don't feel good. It feels like I could sharpen these and then use it as a weapon. They're not exactly comfortable, and for whatever reason, this crown digs into my wrist way more than the Casio. Now, looking at the Casio quality, there obviously are some corners that have been cut. These are not applied indices. These are stamped from underneath. So this is a paper dial that has just gone through a few stamping processes. I don't care at the end of the day because I just care how it looks. But if you want to talk about build quality, that should be something that is mentioned. Also, again, with the crown, as I've covered, with the Vostok, it doesn't inspire confidence when I take the crown out. When I unscrew it, it's wobbly. Also, when I change the date, I don't feel like a satisfying click as the date wheel progresses. Maybe I'm just used to automatic and mechanical watches, but I would appreciate that. Also, just the packaging. Both of these came in the most bargain basement packaging of all time. I mean, we all know the Casio cardboard box, and that's what the Casio came in. But the Vostok came in a plastic box, it, like molded plastic, which I think is probably even cheaper to make. It's hard. It has no grace. There's no aesthetics to it. It's just this literally hard plastic case. Even what you put the watch on is plastic. You can hear it. Not great. So we've been looking at these watches side by side for a while. We went specs. We went quality. What about feelings overall? Because that's really the most important thing when you buy a watch. It could have the most fantastic specs in the entire world, but if you put it on your wrist and you don't have a wow feeling in your heart, then what is the point of buying it? I have to say the Vostok just has more soul. There's more quirks about it that makes it more endearing to me. I absolutely love the domed acrylic crystal. Yes, it's already scratched to hell after almost two weeks, but I just love the way it looks. I love the distortion and I love how it makes it stand out from a crowd. I also like the cushion case. It's different. It's not the same case that you see everywhere. <clears throat> Casio. And the eccentricities of it, even the screw down crown being wobbly, it in some ways kind of contributes to the wearing experience. On the negative side, it's not necessarily a joy to put on. I look forward to putting on my SKX now that I have it on the, oh wait, Rolex is mad now, right? So I have to say J style bracelet. I look forward to putting it on like a few seconds before I put it on my wrist. It's almost like taking a cake out of the oven, like, oh boy, here we go. But the Vostok, for some reason, it's just not very comfortable to wear. It's not uncomfortable. I did yard work for over an hour today wearing this watch. I'm not looking forward to putting this watch on. I love the way it looks, but I'm not rubbing my hands together with excitement to put it on my wrist. Also, I think because of the wobbly crown and some other weird eccentricities, I'm not the most confident with this watch. 
I worry that something's going to go wrong, even though I know that Commandeerski is a tank and not the tanks that you put on the Commandeerski dials. It should last forever, and I hope it does, but there's always that kind of nagging feeling in the back of my head. Now, on the other hand, you want to talk about tanks, I know how reliable this guy is going to be. Casios run forever and stay reliable forever, but it is a little more sterile. I truly love this dial. The sunburst blue is one of my favorite colors on any watch I've ever seen, but it's also, I mean, you can get it anywhere. You can get it at Walmart, uh, Amazon. It, if you can buy this at a department store and you have to basically go to Russia, or at least the Russian internet for this one, this feels like more of the adventure. I'm more excited, or I would be more excited, to talk about this watch versus the Casio if I'm wearing it and someone asks me about it. I mean, look, it's Russian on the dial. This is a conversation piece. There's just so many things about this watch that's endearing that makes me lean towards it as far as my gut feelings. So which way do you go? Well, I think Casio is the head and Vostok is the heart. So if you aren't really into watches yet you want something reliable and good looking, I'm going to point you right to the Casio. You can't go wrong. The dial, gorgeous. Bezel, same. It looks awesome on so many different straps. You're going to have it for years and years and years and it's going to keep perfect time. Go with the Duro. But if you're a watch enthusiast, you love the idea of different movements inside your watches or Russian on your watch or just the idea of having something more fun and funky in your collection, I'm going to have to point you to the Vostok. Luckily, they're so cheap, you don't have to choose if you don't need to. So if you do have enough money to buy two $60 watches, you're not going to go wrong with both. I hope that's not a cop-out because that's what I'm doing, and I'm very, very happy with my decision. Thanks so much for watching. New videos every Tuesday. That's a loud stool. New videos every Tuesday and Thursday. A subscription really does help the channel and like the video if you liked it and I'll see you real soon.